the formidable robot. Super Mario Logan originally only had one human puppet relating to a main character, that puppet in question being Marvin. Marvin wasn't intending to fully replace Mario, but due to the channel facing a cease and desist from Nintendo themselves, Logan was forced to replace every copyrighted character in the series with a human puppet. This resulted in two videos from the channel being lost to time. The episodes in question were, Jeffy's Secret Room, and, The Exodus. Jeffy's Secret Room was scrapped due to the cease and desist letter coming right after the video was finished. The Exodus however was a pre-recorded Halloween special that was thought out before videos such as The Human Potion were a thing. The Exodus, unlike other Halloween specials on the channel, didn't involve the usual references to horror flicks or those trick or treat scenarios. It had a much darker premise. The following you are about to read explains what exactly the video was about, from beginning to end. All I have to prove its existence is an old thumbnail. The episode begins with Mario sitting on the red couch with Rosalina, talking about plans for a nice honeymoon, until Jeffy comes into view, spinning Mario's hat around his head to get his attention. Mario barks at Jeffy to stop touching his hat before Jeffy tells him he's hungry. Mario asks him what he wants, to which Jeffy responds with Burger King. Mario tells him that he's not taking him to Burger King as he's running low on cash, and Jeffy ends up punching his diaper rather than smacking it in a fit of anger. Rosalina once again takes his side like she does in many other videos, but Mario doesn't listen to her and instead drags Jeffy to the kitchen. Mario pours out five cans of green beans in front of Jeffy for dinner, causing Jeffy to simply stare down Mario rather than get upset. A stare that says, you know exactly what I do every time. Jeffy, instead of flipping the plate of green beans, picks up the plate and smashes it on the ground, before jumping on it over and over. Mario, in a fit of rage, yells at Jeffy saying that he'll get him what he wants, caving into his demands. The scene fades to Mario coming back with a Burger King kid's meal, quietly telling Jeffy to eat up. Mario's voice here sounds like he's holding back on getting upset, and he is visibly shaking as if he's channeling the rage inside of him. Jeffy jumps up and down in his seat excitedly, before grabbing the bag from Mario and thanking him for the food. Jeffy proceeds to pull all of the food out of the bag and toss it behind him, before pulling out the toy that came with the kid's meal. Mario shrieks. How fucking brain damaged can you get? Why aren't you eating your kid's meal that you pestered me to get, huh? Jeffy holds the toy up into view and replies. I just wanted the toy daddy. I wasn't even hungry. Off topic, but this was a joke reused from a really old episode back in 2014. Logan occasionally does that for some reason. I don't know why. A moment of silence fills the room for a few seconds, before the silence is broken with Mario screaming at the top of his lungs and rushing out of view. The next scene shows him sitting on the red couch, rocking back and forth and cradled into a ball. The background music wasn't the normal royalty-free songs that you'd hear in the videos. All that could be heard was a messy off-tune music box alongside Mario's whimpering, with voice lines from past videos echoing into Mario's head. All of the voice lines were of Jeffy upsetting Mario, from when he first met him in 2016 to now. The music box stops when Rosalina walks into frame and sits next to Mario, asking him if he's alright. Mario looks up at her, shaking from head to toe, telling her that he's dealt with Jeffy's shit for three years straight, that he can't take it anymore, and that all he wants is something to ease the anger or tolerate Jeffy being around him. He says that he'll take literally anything, like drugs. Rosalina suggests calling a psychiatrist to talk about how he feels, and after some thinking, Mario kisses her and rushes off screen, presumably to get his phone. The scene cuts to Mario lying on his couch, with Rosalina comforting him and Jeffy staring off into space. Brooklyn Guy is standing next to Mario holding a clipboard and pen, asking him what's on his mind. Mario explains that he hates his life, and it's all because of his son. Sitting up, Mario explains further that his attitude, general presence, and basically everything about his kid makes him want to put his head in a wall. 
the bench continues for another minute or so with him talking about what just happened today, and all the things he did in the past, as well as mentioning that Rosalina takes his side for the most part. Brooklyn Guy cracks a sexist joke before advising Mario to take medication. It's never emphasized on what type of medication this is during the scene. Mario looks at it for a moment and looks back at Rosalina. Rosalina tells Mario that if he genuinely feels like he needs it, he should take it, and Jeffy makes his dumb hurt noise, as if he doesn't care about what's going on. Mario takes the pills from Brooklyn Guy and asks if he should use cash or credit, to which Brooklyn Guy responds with, You'll never pay me! What are you talking about? You usually just pay back with favors, isn't that enough? After being told when and how many times a day he should consume a pill, Mario then takes the medication bottle as the camera pans upward, away from the couch. Once the camera pans back down, it shows the Marvin puppet. Marvin explains that he actually feels somewhat good and that the pills might be working. He turns to his right to tell Rosalina this, but she isn't there. Not even Jeffy. Marvin calls out for the two only to get no response. Brooklyn Guy is visibly confused and asks Marvin what he's doing. Marvin says Rosalina and Jeffy just left out of nowhere. Brooklyn Guy replies, clearly lost. Who the hell is Rosalina? Well, you do, Rosalina, my wife. Actually, now that I think about it, who's Jeffy? Is that your kid? You said you were upset about your son, but I, uh... Have you not been listening? Jeffy is my son. You've been here for years. You should know that. Oh, right. You like mumbling to air a lot. I forgot. To, uh, to air. Listen, I've been living in this house for four years. You saw me walk into the mansion when you brought us here. You saw my wife and Jeffy and Bowser and Chef PP and... Chef what? What kind of names are you coming up with? You've literally met him. Wait, where's my hat? And my overalls. You never wore a hat or overalls. Every time you call me down here, you have a shirt and tie on. No, I do. Ah, uh, look, just, I know you're messing with me. I don't know why you're doing this right after you gave me my medication. But I don't want to hear anything else. I just want to relax for the rest of the day, okay? Just, go. Please leave. Fine, sheesh. With that, Brooklyn Guy walks out of frame, leaving Marvin by himself at the couch. Marvin sighs and stands up, before looking around the house, calling for Jeffy and Rosalina. He goes to the kitchen to ask Chef PP if he's seen them, but Chef PP isn't there either. Neither was Bowser, or Junior, or anyone. No one was home but him. Marvin is then seen walking upstairs to the bathroom. Upon reaching it, he looks at the mirror, and sees the Mario plush as his reflection, sighing deeply, thinking that his imagination is just messing with him. He begins to reassure himself a little bit, saying that everyone is just busy today and that they'll be back home soon. He turns on the sink to wash his face, with the camera panning up a little. Once it pans down, the Marvin puppet is seen as the reflection, causing him to rub his eyes and shiver. He begins stuttering for a moment before rushing out of the bathroom and back downstairs to where his couch is. He sits upon the red couch, taking deep breaths in an attempt to calm himself down, before he sees the pill bottle. Assuming that the medication is what causes him to feel this way, he grabs it and reads the label, written messily with Sharpie. His eyes would widen upon seeing what it was for. Sir Uncle, to Marvin, take to a day. They were schizophrenia bipolar disorder meds. Marvin, still holding the pill bottle, began shivering as gloomy royalty-free music began to play in the background. More voice lines from past videos would echo over the music as Marvin began to reflect upon his life. The lie that was everyone he ever loved. They never existed. His head made them up for years on end. And really, Mario, or Marvin, I think, would chuck the pill bottle toward a nearby wall before gasping for air. He would repeatedly cover his ears to block out the voices, repeatedly screaming no with a high pitch. He would then take his hands off of his ears and speak. I know I'm not crazy. I know it. I know it. That this has to be a dream. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. 
Marvin would begin hitting himself in the face, not just with his own fist, but with various objects, such as the TV remote. After some time of failing to wake up from this very real nightmare he was facing, the scene would end with him burying his face in a couch cushion, softly weeping. The scene and music would fade away to a new time card, with plain white text against a dark background. One day later. The scene fades to Marvin, walking into the kitchen and talking to nothing, asking Chef PP if he could make him some pepperoni pizza for dinner. A moment of silence fills the room before Marvin says, Thank you! He walks over to the freezer to get a pizza box, and then the scene fades to Marvin making the pizza alone, as if he were pretending to be Chef PP. There was no music playing from this scene forward. Only silence for the rest of the movie. A few more clips showing Marvin interacting with nothing and filling in the spots of people he cared for would show. I can't remember every clip, but I do know that two of them had Marvin hitting a wall with a hammer after yelling at Jeffy, and barking at Black Yoshi after being asked for money. After a round four clips went by, with those two included, a doorbell could be heard ringing in the background. Marvin makes his way to the front door to see who came. It was Mr. Goodman. He was revealed to have been a real person, but he wasn't a rich greedy landlord who constantly pestered Marvin for cash, which is the archetypal house payment. He was actually a pretty nice person, living next door to him. Not to mention, instead of his typical business attire, he wore a grey hoodie with cargo pants. In his hand was a welfare check, and he would hold his hand out to Marvin. Hey Marvin, just came to give you your welfare. Don't want people stealing your mail now, okay? Well look, I swear I paid my house payment this month. Just ask anyone. Marvin, buddy, we've been over this. You don't owe me anything. I'm not your landlord. I'm just your neighbor. What do you want? My overalls. A back massage. I'll do anything that doesn't involve money. Anything. Please Marvin, listen to me. I don't want your money. I just want to be there for you. You've been cooped up in this house by yourself, talking to people that aren't there, and I rarely see you come out. I'm worried about you. Are you alright? Do you want me to come inside and spend the night? I will literally do just that. Well why are you being so nice to me? You usually just come by for my house payment. Why are you so merciful all of a sudden? For your house pa. No, I don't. I come by like, once a month to give you your check. I've never asked you for my muff. Okay, look. I'll come by tomorrow. Please let me in by then. I just want to spend some time with you, and make sure your house is in shape. I know I can't make you consider, but... Please. Think about it for a bit. Goodman then sighs and turns around, saying his goodbye to Marvin before leaving the frame. Marvin doesn't respond and quickly shuts the door, locking it from the inside. The final scene shows Marvin slowly walking over to the red couch and sitting down. He sighs and looks to his right. A light blue nightgown is laid over one of the couch cushions. Marvin begins talking to it. It was just Goodman honey. He came over for my house payment again. Hi he said he'd come by tomorrow. I did pay the house payment. I don't know why he came by again. Does he just like to fuck with me? Marvin stares at the blue dress for a few seconds before breathing in deeply and turning towards the camera. He lets out one final line in a quiet tone. You know what? I'll just make a deal with him like I always do. Forget it. Let's just watch TV. The camera slowly pans to the left until Marvin is out of the frame. The scene doesn't cut to the SML question card with that happy royalty free music. There wasn't even that funniest comment gets a shout out quote on the bottom. Instead the text fades into the scene. What would you do if your life turned out to be a lie? That's when the episode ended. No merch plug, no extras, nothing. It just stops there. On the right of this post is my recreation of what the question card looked like. This is something I haven't mentioned from the beginning until now. I know about this episode because I am a part of the crew. I made the thumbnail mentioned at the beginning too. No one seems to talk about the episode anymore, not even Logan. I doubt it's because of its nature as Logan has made plenty of dark videos before.
My only guess is that everyone on the crew forgot about it. I will not disclose which crew member I am as I'd rather remain anonymous, but I can assure you that I'm not lying. The only reason I'm talking about this is because I feel like it's important to the channel, even if no one else on the crew thinks so. If this gets popular enough, maybe Logan will recognize that we want to see it. I will literally post it on my own channel if that helps with the copyrighted characters problem. Fans, do your thing.